Hey YouTube and Facebook, uh, back again. This is Andrew Waters working on the 95 Jeep Wrangler project. Uh, I got a couple more studio points uh, working on the hood tonight and a little bit on the fenders. Kind of want to show you guys a little bit about what uh, what I ran across. So in the process of working on this little section right here, these two little locking hinges here, I ran across an interesting situation. Let me pull up the bottom box here if I can even get a hold of it. There we go. All right, so you can see right here in the locking hinge uh, category, uh, come down here and we've got the hinge plate with finger right there. Move that in the center screen. Okay, so essentially what we want to do is we want to create this angle right here. And you would think that that would be fairly simple to do. But I discovered the hard way that not everything is always as it appears in the studio program. Okay, so what I grabbed here is part uh, 44302B which is the hinge plate, hinge plate one by two locking with two fingers on end without the bottom groove. And this is initially the pieces that I started to work with to try and get this fender formed. When I got this set into right here that I've got highlighted, um, everything was all well and good. But when I set this piece in and I tried to turn it, if you notice, the little yellow box right here is right in the middle of it, which represents its pivot point. Anybody who knows anything about this hinge knows that's not the right pivot point. So I was fighting it for quite some time, trying to figure out what I wasn't doing right. And eventually, I came back down here and I grabbed the other piece, since they're both almost the same piece, one is an A and one is a B, move this one out of the way, and I moved 44302A, which has the bottom groove, I moved that one into the position, and lo and behold, now the yellow box, the pivot point, is where it should be. So now you can come back in here, and you can move this freely, and make your joint however you need it to. And what I ended up doing, once I got this assembled, where I needed it to go over here, I'll delete these out, is I was able to come in and grab this piece and this piece, right click, copy, and paste. So now I have an exact replica of that part right there. Yep, there goes the train. Um, that part right there, and now I have an exact replica that I can take and put on the other side of my Jeep. So I can go put that over here, spin my project around, and then when I'm actually ready to put this in, then I can do so. Boy, they're noisy tonight, aren't they? Okay, so we'll jump down here. That's a little too far. There we go, right there. And it looks like my hinge piece disappeared. Anyway, it allows you to go in and make a copy of it was the point that I was trying to make. There it is right there. And you can take this as an assembly and you can move it right into the position so that it mirrors the other side exactly the way you want it to go. So that's one part of two. And then the other thing that I was working on, in my Jeep, um, in order to make this hood the way that it's supposed to be, um, these little hood pieces, they've got some reinforcement underneath them. And for me to try and put the curved brick 
and then the tile and then turn it over and then put it on the Jeep and turn the Jeep over. It just didn't make any sense. So what I wanted to do was figure out a way that I could get this entire assembly to be one piece. And the way that I did that, I will show you guys. Uh, it's called a subgroup. So we're just going to pull one of them out of here. And that will be from step 204. And you can see it's called hood group. And um, unlike its counterparts here, which are just individual pieces, if you have a subgroup, it's actually got a file folder listed on it, which, which tells the end user, whoever wants to get these instructions, that there is a file folder that has a section of parts. And the way to access that folder, if you grab your group here, right click on it and go into sub model, you can view, I had to zoom out there just for information, and we will turn that around, bring it up, and zoom in. There we go. Um, you can go inside the sub-model, and you can see exactly the way that it looks, the way that I've built it. And you can see what parts are required, uh, piece by piece. And then to exit, you go back to return to main model, which was right down here on the bottom right of the screen. I'll show you that again, just in case you guys missed it. Submodel, view, zoom out, and there's the submodel there. But just return to main mo main model, and then your um, your grouping part is right there. Now, say for example, you guys want to create a submodel all on your own. Okay, so let's move our Jeep aside for just a second. And we'll do our own little submodel. So let's go in here and we'll go blue. And I'll bring up all the blue stuff. Okay, so say for example, I want to do like a door sill, like the top of a door sill. Um, I'm going to go ahead and come in here looking for slope. There's slope. Curved brick. All right, we'll take one of these. Zoom in some, and we'll put that right there. I'm going to turn my model around a little bit. Um, we will grab the plate section, put in a 1x8 tile on top. Okay. We'll grab a 1x6, some reinforcement underneath, and another 1x6 just to close out the, the subgroup. So this is just an example. These are just a couple pieces I built just on a whim. So I'm going to take my cursor, my uh, box here, and I'm going to open it up across all of these. And you can see down on the bottom right here, everything that I've highlighted on the main screen is all highlighted together down here. We're going to right click on this. We're going to go down to Submodel, Create. And then I'm going to go ahead and name this as door frame, just for an example, and click enter. Okay. So I can take this door frame, I can put it wherever I want it to go, and if you notice, it stays as one complete assembly. So once it goes into the subgroup, you guys can move this around, play with it at will. And remember, if you want to go into the parts that are involved with it or go back and edit it, you go into submodel. And view, okay, zoom out, we're going to find our part, sometimes you just got to play with it a little bit, and then here's your parts right here, and you can go back in and say like I want to add a 1x2 plate on the bottom of this for whatever reason, that actually will add to your sub model inside the folder view, so you'll be within um, the sub model grouping. And then if you return to the main model, you'll see that um, the subgroup is back over here. Almost looks like a gun. And then if you want to, like for example on this, I've gone in and you can see on the right side here, hood group, hood group, hood group, hood group. 
you can go back in and you can copy that and paste it just like we did with the hinge piece a number of times however you need it to be and that way uh, your user can go back in there when they're going through the instructions okay for example I'm on step 202 I put in this 2x3 tile and this 2x4 plate now I'm on step 203 which is a hood group oh what's a hood group okay so now I can go in and look at that I can kind of see um, what the guy that made the instructions was trying to convey but if I really want to go in and look at it that's where you can go in and look at this, the uh, sub model through the view category so anyway um, hopefully that gives you guys a little bit more information to kind of chew on and once again if you don't want to have the part or if you're done with it whatever if you need to go and modify it um, you can always click delete and you're right back to where you were so that's been um, the tutorial number four um, again this is Andrew Waters 9406 on Facebook um, that is it for tonight and uh, I will continue to make more videos as um, sections come up that I think are important uh, through the tutorial if you guys have any comments or if you have any ideas of stuff you want to see me do uh, just let me know in the comments section and um, I will say that as I go through this process I will get into the instruction section just a little bit uh, in another tutorial